let me have five guys out here. Um, and uh, again, I just, it doesn't matter which five really. Um, take, a, take the ball here. All right. And then, uh, so just imagine we've come down the floor in a fast break. And we traditionally want to run, you know, we're going to run somebody to the rim. All right, we call this a rim runner. And then we're going to try to run to the corners with our wings. All right, and then we're, we have the ball down kind of in what we call the slot, which is offset. You know, this angle, this, uh, this part of the floor here, like a 45 degree angle of the bucket. We don't really want the ball in the middle of the floor unless we're in a primary break situation. That leaves one guy here. Um, you know, in what we call a trail spot. And we want the trail spot to be in the other slot. All right, we don't want him necessarily here at the high post, okay? So <clears throat> this is how we come down the floor most of the time. All right, in, in, in general, I like to take the rim runner and then run him back to the elbow area. All right, and the reason we do this is twofold. One is we want to put pressure on the rim in transition, so we want to collapse the defense. You'll notice that we don't ask our guys to stop here because when you stop here, the defense stops here. When the defense stops here, we don't get any early attacks. All right? We go all the way down to the corner. Not only is the corner the most efficient uh, three-point shot in the game, all right, but it creates opportunities for us to attack early. So we come down with all this space around the ball. I have 25 feet on each side of the ball to be able to attack, and now we're into our penetrate and kick game okay and we work a lot on these situations this is a whole nother concept but we work a lot on these situations of coming down here attack and I don't care whether you attack this way or attack that way but I want you to attack and I want you to get into the paint we call those paint grabs you know on a certain amount a certain offense we'll say hey we need two or three paint grabs what does that mean it means the point guards coming down here he's got to get to the paint right this is one paint grab he kicks out now somebody else is driving, that's another paint grab. So that's our terminology for getting to the paint, try to put pressure on early. All right, we do that right away. Like if we can come down like this and get to the paint, we don't need to run an offense. All right, so we're already putting pressure on. All right, <clears throat> when the defense is back and set, that's when we start to flow into our corner game. All right, now we'll snap this guy back. So the first reason we run them deep is to put pressure on and open up the rim, uh, open up the floor for paint grabs. The second one is when you just run this guy here and then the defense will start to wrestle with him and deny him and all that kind of stuff and then he gets forced out here. Now the whole angles of everything that you're trying to do get, get altered. So it's important that this guy here catches the ball on or as close to that elbow as he possibly can get. All right. So this is our, this is our spacing. Okay, so when, now when the Nuggets come down and we're in this offense right here, right, we're pretty much done. We're just going to play basketball, pass and move at this stage. But I'm going to show you a lot of structure now, and then you can, uh, you can do what you want with it. <clears throat> All right, so where, where would we put certain guys with certain skill sets? All right, okay, so this is a big guy normally, right? This is a big guy we asked to run the, to the rim and snap back. So if you have your best skilled big guy, a guy who can pass, all right, handle the ball, who's comfortable playing away from the hoop a lot, or, or just enough really, all right, you can put him there. All right? Oftentimes your big guys will be interchangeable, right, just due to rebounding. Re lot big guys will rebound the ball at a high rate, right, that means they'll be in the trail spot too, all right. <clears throat> so if you wanted to have a certain guy handle the ball in the post right there all the time, then you would want to designate that he gets there as much as possible, all right? And then the other big guy would be in this trail spot right here. But for us, right, we have a guy, uh, we have guys we want there more often than not, and then the other four spots are totally interchangeable, okay? In traditional lineup, you know, this would be maybe your your four or your five, that would be the other big guy, the four or the five. That would be a two or a three, and that would be a two or three, and here's your one. 
All right, but there's going to be times when you want to play up-tempo basketball. You, we allow anybody on our team to rebound the ball and dribble. So you'll see our five-man dribbling down the floor because we want the pace and the early attack of the paint. But having said that, all right, when, when we come down the floor, there may be uh, lots of times where this is our three-man. This may be Danilo Gallinari, okay? And we want him to be able to initiate the offense uh, with the same effectiveness that a traditional point guard would. So that's what I'm talking about when the offense doesn't have a, you know, doesn't have uh, or doesn't need a true point guard. All right, <clears throat> so now we get to this spot. We want to throw the ball into the post. All right, we, now ideally we want to enter the ball here and this triggers a, what we call a split game. So this is the first, uh, first, act, first set of actions, if you will. Right? If we throw the ball into the low uh, high post or elbow right there, throw it there, okay, he now has a choice whether he can go low split or high split. And what I mean by that is it's just a screening game. Okay, so let's say he goes low. Right? So now he's coming down here to screen. All right, these two guys stop. Now they're reading the screen. So you can get, you know, put your guys in situations here where they're going to play against defenders who switch or don't switch. All right, so let's say he comes up over top. All right, he may curl it. And, at, and what we really stress is anytime there's an exchange like this between two guys on the perimeter, we want one of them to cut to the basket. All right, and then, you know, it, again, you work, on your, you work on your reads here, whether they're switching or not switching. So he would cut to the basket, all right? Now, on the other side, he, could, he would go through, all right? We respace the floor. Now we play here. Okay, and then just let's say you go pass and chase with a pick and roll. Okay, you would stay at the top of the floor. All right, you come off. Now we're, play, now we're playing basketball, all right? So go run that, get back to the beginning. So that would just be what we call low split, all right? Um, so we throw to the elbow, we can run low split. We throw to the elbow, we can run high split. So throw it in there. So now it's a, pick, now it's a, a screen here. Same thing, okay? A lot of times this will be a switch at the top of the floor. They like to switch, they'll, they'll switch that screen less because at the bottom of the floor, the top of the floor, they'll switch a little bit more. All right, again, we want one of these guys to cut, okay? Cut or curl, he goes down the paint. He may snap back here, all right? Now we go into a pick and roll or something like that, all right? We call our corner game C, all right? So we say C, we, we come down here, and we, we give all these things names in the process of teaching. So we can say, hey, let's run C low, all right? So he would throw into the elbow, he runs a low split, okay? They make a cut, he hits them, maybe not, come off, boom, all right, stop. So now you get in situations like, that's just the basic action right now. We're trying to distort the defense, get to the paint. What you guys do on the weak side, you can, you can do lots of different things. So let's, uh, let's walk through that C low action for a second for me. Okay, walk through that. Yeah, come over, let's say you come over top. Come here. All right, stop. So you're gonna you're be, go all the way through. You're gonna be in this spacing a lot, all right? So you're gonna come over top, stop. Now what, what, what we want, let's say you don't have anything there, you're gonna attack here, you're gonna make this pass here, all right? This would trigger an automatic cut from the guy in the middle. You're out to the other side. Now you can pass here. Okay, cut, right? You can follow on for a post up. If you have a post up, you can follow on for a pick and roll if you're more of a pick and roll guy. So what you decide to do on the back side is really up to you, okay? You're gonna have to play with your spacing and your skill set. One of the other things that we do a lot, you can do a lot of on the C low is this, okay? Run this back, okay? and throw it inside, okay, go down, go over top or cut, stop when you get to the rim, all right, now go pick and roll, come off this here, yeah, now you're going to come out behind the pick and roll, okay, and the reason that that's an effective one is because his man will stop and guard the pick and roll guy, all right, so if you walk through it, right, walk through it for a second, <clears throat> I'm guarding here, I'm playing defense, I'm playing defense. Now here comes the pick and roll. I'm gonna play defense here, and now I get out late to the guy who's shooting, all right? So we call that snap action. So if we went C low snap, that's what we're looking for, okay? But we don't ever call that, all right? 
we don't even call C low, we call C. All right, because when we teach this stuff, we give it names and we practice it, but then when we play, we take all the names away and give them all the freedom they want. So they play with concepts in their mind. All right, <clears throat> so if they were to go C high, okay, he would throw it here, C high would be a high split. Now we're making a cut. You, he may make another cut, all right, pick and roll, whatever. You're going out, you're shaking up behind. All right, so there's two actions that we get, C low, C high, out of the elbow feed, all right. One of the beautiful things about this offense is, here we go, all right. Let's say we can't feed it to the elbow. Let's say he's denied. Let's say this guy's, we don't have to worry about that, all right. We can enter the offense somewhere else, all right. So we just can make this pass here, all right. We just call that uh, swing action, okay. So we would say, we'll just go swing action, all right. Now, this guy's job in all of our offenses is to create pace, get early rim attacks, and then create early movement, all right? So everything triggers on A, where he throws the ball, and B, where he decides to cut. All right, here we go. So swing it, double, curl, follow. Nice, good, all right? Now run that back, okay? And just hold the ball and stop when I say stop. All right, again, you have, I'm not a continuity guy, all right? I, I'm not a guy who's going to give you, we're going to do A and then B and then C and then D and E. I'm going to give you A, sometimes B, and I want you to play basketball, all right? Obviously, you got to teach your guys how to do this, all right? But th there is some continuity. Just like I showed you the weak side cut and the snap action continuity, here's some continuity. So if you ran swing double, swing it, all right? See, down, now you're going down. Okay, curl, don't give it to him. Curl, don't give it to him. Snap back, pass it, chase it over top. Okay, stop. Now you can play two man game right here. You either give it to him and he goes, you can turn him down and now pass here and play pick and roll with this guy. All right, now you have spread pick and roll, a uh, guy rolling to the hoop. All right, so that we call that pinch post game or, or whatever, but there's, you know, continuity in it. Whatever, you're, whatever you like, there's a lot of weak side actions that you can uh, put into this stuff. All right, so now we've come down, we've hit the elbow, we've gone C high, C low. Okay, we've come down, we've hit the, the uh, trail, uh, trail, uh, trail big or whatever he is, okay? And uh, we've run uh, slice and double, okay? Let's say we can't make either of those plays because the defense is taken away. We can always throw to the corner, all right? So let's say they deny here and they can't feed here. We can always throw to the corner, all right? Yeah, throw to the corner. So now, again, I'm going to give him two things that he can do, all right? He can go through, okay? Good cut. He just goes through all the way. All right, then a lot of times I like, this can be pick and roll, but I like more than pick and roll, pass and chase. Okay, stop. And the reason I like pass and chase more than just pick and roll, pick and rolls tend to be slow developing plays. Good defensive teams can stop them. They can put a, you know, whatever coverage, they can switch them. Pass and chase gives me options. He passes, he chases. If I deny him, he can go back door. All right, that's a chance to get a cheap bucket. All right, if I go underneath, at the moment, at the point of the screen, he can bump back and shoot it. If I'm pressuring him, all right, all right and I blow up this screen, he can curl it, go to the basket. Now look who's behind who. All right, so it opens up more opportunities for cheap buckets if you play pass and chase. Then the other thing is you can. This is also very hard to guard. Give the ball back to here. So instead of just uh, pass and pick and roll. You can also take one dribble and then flip it to him. Okay, flip it to him. Uh, so you take one dribble and flip it to him. Now defense is kind of waiting to see what you do, and those are very tricky situations to guard. So you'll see a lot of. We have we're lucky in the Nuggets that we have uh, several skilled big guys. They're like dinosaurs in the NBA. No one has skilled big guys anymore. We have a bunch of them. Okay, most of them are European kids. Right, and they're phenomenal, right? We let them handle the ball out here. 
dribble, dribble, pass, dribble, dribble, fake, late pass over top. Okay, they're fun to watch. All right. <clears throat> um, all right, so that's C. That would be, uh, come back, that would be C uh, through. That would be through action. All right, or what we can do is do this, right? Throw ahead. He's going to run a through cut, but then he's going to stop and put on the brakes, and he's going to turn around and screen for this guy right here. All right, and then he can go down to the hoop for a cheap layup. If he's a post-up guy, you can post him up at this point in time. All right, he bounces back. All right, we either throw it inside or we throw out top. Let's say we throw out top. Here's some continuity for you. Again, this guy could go right into a pick and roll at the top of the floor. So let's walk through that and we'll get the timing of it a little bit better. <clears throat> right, here we go. So this would be, we would call this rip. These are called rip screens right here. Now he hits here and now you're right on top of him. Now it's pick and roll and replace or whatever, okay? Yeah? <clears throat> so let's run this uh, one more time, okay? Uh, just and stop when I say stop. Here we go. Throw ahead, set the rip screen. Okay, all right, stop. So, so let's say, I mean, ideally, this guy sets a really good screen and we get a layup going to the bucket. All right, let's say he doesn't. All right, I'm guarding him. Come back and set the rip screen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guard here. All right, just walk through it. Let's say I, I blow it up. I get through it. Okay, now you can go right into pick and roll as well. All right, and that's hard to guard. You're you're getting off the top of the floor there. All right, so you can do different things on this one. All right, get back to the, uh, well, run it and go to the pick and roll part. All right, so let's say we, let's say we, we snap, the screener steps back and you're going to set a pick and roll on him. All right, here we go, pass it. Good, good. All right, okay, stop. All right, so let's talk about this pick and roll right now. And this is in general in all pick and rolls that you may use. So traditionally, this is what we would have been called, we would call roll and replace. He comes over top the screen. He would roll, okay, to the rim, and he would raise up behind it or replace behind it. We would call that roll and replace, all right? It's not used that much anymore because defensive have, got, defensive have gotten very clever in stopping that. So now what we do is, let's say he's down, you're, you're up, ball is here. Okay, if we have like spread lineups, okay, you would, you would just lift up and you would go out. But if you have, if this is a big guy, you'd come off, okay, you set a screen, you would come off, and we just call this slide action. We just roll this guy underneath, <coughs> all right. A lot of defenses now are sagging off pick and rolls, and they're uh, kind of guarding the paint, all right, inviting you to take these tough shots right here. We talked about the shots that we valued, which were threes and layups. Defenses are very advanced now that they're trying to bait you in to take these shots here. So they leave their big guys right here. All right, but in doing so, they leave this area wide open for these short rolls. Okay, so our guard comes off. That opens up the weak side roll. Now one guy is guarding two down here, all right, while the other one's guarding the ball. Let's just go through the whole, let's just quickly go through the different uh, um, actions one more time, okay? So we're going to go C low, okay? So here's what I want. We're going to run the action, all right? After the action, if we get three guys on one side, I want the middle guy to cut like we showed you initially. Uh, after that, we're going to run the action. When we come out of the action, I want five passes, all right? Generally, after you pass, I want to cut. When you cut, I want you to respace all the way behind a three-point line. Keep energy in the ball. That means keep passing and keep moving, okay? Don't let it stop. Play, we, we use the terminology a lot. Play with a .5 mentality, meaning when I have the ball, I want to do something in .5 seconds. I'm going to shoot it, pass it, or drive it. Okay, we don't want to hold, all right? Generally, when we practice, we're an up-tempo team. We play, we play with 14 seconds on the shot clock because we want to get up and down in 14 seconds, all right? And if anyone holds for uh, 1.5 seconds, or less than two, rather, it's a turnover. So we want guys to play with a .5 mentality, right? So that's what we're going to run. The, we're going to run this action. We're going to run C low, all right, into five passes. So here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Good. Hold up. Hold up. Let's go back. Remember when we said we ran the split game, we want to cut. 
So I don't care who it is, one of you guys has got to cut to the bucket. All right, so it could be you curling over top, could be the screener slipping, okay, could be you backdooring, I don't care. Use your imagination, and that's a lot of times when you play with these read and, react, read and react offenses, they're harder to play five on zero because there's nothing to read. So you have to use your imagination. All right, the other key to playing read and react basketball is thinking two passes ahead. When you think two passes ahead, when your players think two passes ahead, then they've got the nature of the offense, all right? Meaning, hey, I'm here, the ball's there, it's coming my way in two passes. What can I do for my teammates? Can I cut? Can I screen? Can I space the floor better? All right, <clears throat> here we go, let's go. Point five mentality, let's go. I need a cut, I need a cut. Right on top of it, there you go, come on. Now I need five passes, let's go, cut. Oh, come on, let's go back, let's go back. Here we go. <clears throat> come on. Let's go, let's go. Cut, right on top of it. Come over, move it, move it, cut. Now move yourself, cut. Good. Let's go, move it. Up. Good. All right, not bad. What I liked what they did is they didn't dribble a lot, okay? My high school coach said that the worst thing they ever did to a basketball was put air into it, all right? Um, and I like the fact that they kept moving. All right, and that's the other thing, when you play with random offenses or motion offenses, you're going to be off balance at times. It's going to happen, right? Coaches can't lose their mind. Players can't lose their mind. Look at the floor, balance the floor, reset the, you know, reset the spacing, uh, and, and keep, keep moving the ball, okay? So it's going to happen once in a while. One thing I like to tell our guys is, like, pay attention to the guy in front of you, right? If he, if he doesn't move, you can't move, but we want him to move. All right, so you can fill behind him. All right, so move with a purpose. Watch what's going on in front of you. All right, <clears throat> everybody, you know, like I can always tell when I, I'm like kind of the offensive coordinator for the Nuggets, so I do all the offensive breakdown. When, when I watch film, I see, I know our offense is in trouble when I see a bunch of guys looking at the ball all the time. Okay, they can't see guys screening for them. They can't see opportunities to cut. Defensively, you should never not know where the ball is. Offensively, I don't care whether you see the ball or not because when you're open, the ball is going to find you. All right, all right, here we go. Let's run C high. I need a cut. I need to come out of the action with five passes. One thing about this guy here in the middle, and I didn't say this, so that's my fault. Once, once the action is done, you want to get out of the middle of the floor, okay? Maybe later in the clock, you can come back up to run sort of some sort of pinch action, but the reason that offense functions well is because with the cutting opens up the middle of the floor for our penetration and kick game. So when, once the action is done, work, work low, okay, work into pick and rolls and roll out of it, all right? There we go, let's go. See high, see high, let's go, I need a cut. Good, right on top of it, pick and roll, let's go. Good, that's fine, good. All right. Go, go back and just walk through what you just did. All right, so here's another uh, little nugget for teaching, like, read and react basketball, motion basketball. Okay, I tell our guys this all the time. Like, we, we have a structure here. It's very basic, and we can call it all these different plays if we want to. All right, but when we let our guys just play, or when the play breaks down, you have to be able to just play, pass and move. We tell our guys all the time, A, watch the guy in front of you. B, play, you know, play with a .5 mentality, all the stuff I just told you. The other thing is, <clears throat> I don't care what you do. I really don't, okay? I don't care whether you cut. I don't care whether you screen. I don't care whether you space. I don't care whether you stand at some points, all right? I just want you to do it quick so your teammates know what you're doing, and I want you to do it well. You got it quick and well. If I'm going to cut, it may not be the right thing to do in that situation, but if I cut quick and I cut well to score, all right, it's going to put pressure on the defense. My teammates are going to know what, what I'm doing so they can react. All right, and then if I do it well, obviously I have a high, ch high chance of being effective. If I wait, okay, and then I go half-ass, it's never going to work anyway, okay? So point five mentality doesn't just mean with the ball, it means without the ball, all right? So for example, like if you can remember what we did there, so we fed it here, we ran a high split, you curled down, okay? Now at this point, you didn't get the ball, fine. Right? Now at this point in time, I don't care whether you go there or there, all right? 
Once your cut is finished, just get there quick. Your eyes are his, okay? Watch the guys in front of you. He's technically in front of you relative to the ball. So when he comes out this way, it's up to you to space for him, all right? Now we go pick and roll at the top of the floor, let's say. Okay, you're gonna roll hard. You're gonna fill behind that pick and roll, okay? You got that? We wanna fill up, fill like our spots on the floor when they get vacated, all right? So let's run that one more time. Let's run C high, okay? We'll run C with the high split. So this would be C swing high if we were calling it a play, all right? If not, we're just calling it C, all right? And he happens to throw there. All right, here we go, let's go, run it. Good, good, good. I need a cut, I need a cut. Good, nice, good, that's it, roll, nice, play, play, relocate, good, all right, stop, this is good, so take the ball right there, all right, this is, take the ball in the corner just like you did, this is great, this is what we want, we live for this right here, so you're driving hard, all right, so relocation rules, all right, and we'll show you those in a minute, would say, when, when I'm, when the guy's driving baseline, I got to get right here to the top of the restricted circle. All right, this does two things. One, it, first and foremost, it makes my man as a help defender choose. Am I gonna stop the ball or am I gonna play here, right? The other thing it does, it opens up that pass. So relocation rules for us, anytime there's a drive along the baseline, we gotta have a guy at the front of the rim and a guy in the corner. The ball has to have two options, all right? <clears throat> here we go. So, Let's run that again all the way through. C high, swing, right? C swing high. See, I don't even know the names because we don't even call them names, but <laughs> here goes. C swing high, let's go. So, good, nice, good. Right on top of it, out, good. Drive it, okay, get that big guy a layup. There you go, that's basketball right there. Okay, there's really no defense for that. That's what we love about it. One of my, one of my biggest beliefs and this goes back to being a salesman. All right, like when you play in the playoffs in the NBA, they know every single play. I mean, we get a, we get a binder this big on what our team is gonna do, okay? What the other team is gonna do. So I'm sure they're getting the same one. They know everything we're gonna do. So at some point, your offense, if you have the best play in the world, at some point it's gonna break down. Either you're doing or they're doing. When it breaks down, your players have to be able to play basketball. Basketball is about moving and filling space. It's no different than soccer. It's angles, okay? It's being in the right place, it's filling space. Creating space, filling space. It's all the game is, all right? All right, here we go. Let's run now our, C, our, our slice action, okay? So now we're swinging it, okay? We're swinging it, we're cutting off there. Now we're looking, now we're pinning down behind that, okay? And again, we're looking at this action primarily when that action's dead, we can always throw over here. Let's say there's nothing going on over there. We dribble at you, you go back door. Now we pass here, pick and roll, whatever. We're coming off, we open up the middle of the floor, we got all kinds of things. So even though we have an initial action, if that action's not there, we don't want to overlook it. We can go other side all the time, all right? So let's run uh, the slice action off this, all right? Here we go, let's go. Good, so nice. Good. That's it. I like that. Middle of the floor. All right, stop. Let's go back to that pick and roll right there. I want to show you something about, we talked about creating space and filling space. Most defenses are built to do what? Protect the paint, right? So walk through the point where we had a pick and roll right there. Okay, yes. I don't know how we got there. Yeah, this, this is it. Perfect. So we got defense moving underneath. When you can have action on both sides of your floor, and the ball engaged, right, you're gonna score a lot of points because the defense is gonna be stretched. We're coming off pick and roll. Look how much space he has. He has 40 feet. He has 40 feet, right? I'm guarding this, I'm guarding right here. I'm left to make a choice. I'm either gonna come to help, which opens up that pass right away, or I stay hugged up, which means he gets to the paint. Now this guy has to choose. He either is gonna help uphill which opens up that late pass, or he stays back, now you get your layup at the rim. All right, here we go, let's run the, uh, the double action, okay? So remember, double action had a follow too, so it was a curl and then a screen again and a curl again. All right, here we go, let's go swing, swing it. We're going double, good. Come off, curl. Come on, get him, curl, good. 
Now we don't have it. You, let's say you snap back to the elbow on this one. All right, let's go run that again, okay? <clears throat> and, you know, if the, sometimes, sometimes the, you know, the first guy may be open. All right, we just like to have a little continuity so it doesn't bog down. Throw it here, okay? Go get him quick. Now you just wait. I want separation in this screen here because if he, if they switch that, I want him to be able to go back door. Now, okay, the other thing this separation does, it allows you to see what they've done here. Who's picking up whom. If they switch it, it gives you a little gap there for error to screen the right guy. So come off. All right, now you're going to curl it tight. Okay, you're looking to feed that guy. Now you're going to get him. And again, we've got our 40 feet of space that we talk about. Let's say neither of them are there. Now we're throw here. Okay, run and chase it. Okay, give it to him. Turn around, quick pick and roll, come back to the middle of the floor. Yeah, play two-man game. We got a cut on the other side, all right? Give me something that looks like that, all right? <clears throat> Here we go. Good. Snap back, good job, great. Good. Good, 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 good job. Keep energy in the ball. Give me a layup, all right? All right, run it one more time and just stop when I say stop. All right, here we go. Hurry up, get to it. Hurry up, get to it. All right, run the, run the double. Here we go. Swing it. Go down. Pick. Curl. Get him again. Curl. Snap back. All right, snap back. Stop. Uh, all right. At this point in time, okay, you can go this side of the floor too. Okay, at any point in time, you can go this side of the floor. All right, so we don't have to always get bogged down on one side of the floor. We can go dribble handoff into the same action, all right? That kind of stuff. All right, go back. Let's go through the, uh, through, the uh, through action and then the rip action. One more time. Here we go. So, so hold up. My bad, my bad, my bad. Let's go back. Let's, this is where we throw to the corner, okay? Let's see where they throw, we throw to the corner, okay? Throw to the corner. Now you cut through. Okay, you can make that cut if you want, or this cut. Okay, uh, now we're playing. You're either, now this is, remember we said we like pass and chase here, right? Pass and chase, come off of it, right? We got it, whatever, we give it to them. We got that middle cut on the other side. So give me one of those, please. I don't care what it looks like on the back side right now. Let's focus on the strong side action. Here you go. <clears throat> go ahead, yeah, throw the corner. Look for it, look for it, look for it, look for it. Every cut's gotta be a scoring cut, chase it. You can give it to him or not, curl, good job, all right? Nice, good, all right, finish that. Finish that, <clears throat> all right. Uh, and then we had the rip screen, okay? Let's do that real quick. Have, yeah, now you're gonna set a screen for the big guy at the elbow, remember? Yeah, so, but, but make sure, yeah, exactly. So get a good screen angle, okay? Get a good screen angle. <clears throat> With screen angles, okay, this is really important. Screen angles, okay? You basically, you want to set a screen in the direction that the man you're screening for wants to travel. All right, so I want to set a screen like this. At this point in time, he wants to travel this way. Okay, so I want my back to be 180 degrees to the direction he wants to travel, all right? So that way I can set a good screen and take the guy out, all right? If I wanted him to go over there, I would set this screen here, okay? If that's what you, if you wanted him to go into a ball screen. All right, let me just show you something what I love about this offense here. So give me, um, let me have uh, three balls, please, okay? And let me have uh, two more players, if you don't mind. <clears throat> okay, so let me have a uh, ball here, okay? And let, let's have, you're gonna be a passer. And, and you're going to be a passer. All right, actually, I only need two players, right? So we, we, can, we work on this offense not just on five on zero like you saw. All right, we also work on a shooting drill. All right, and I'll show you this real quick. So if we wanted to practice like, hey, let's run C low and get shots out of C low. So we would just throw the ball here. Okay, we run this little screen action. And we have, you, you can have players or, or coaches doing this, all right? So I want one of you guys who had the ball, you're gonna stand right here, right? You're gonna stand right here and you're gonna hit this guy cut into the basket, okay? <clears throat> and then um, 
the next guy is gonna, with the ball is going to be out right there in the slot. All right, so now we're hitting him going to the bucket. Now you're going pick and roll. Okay, you're coming off this thing. You're hitting the big guy going to the basket off the roll. All right, and now you're popping back here for a shot. All right, so just run that little sequence. So we get to run the sequence and we get three shots out of it. All right, <clears throat> here we go. So, yeah, hit the high post, run a low split, okay? So now we got catch and finish, pick and roll, hit the roll guy coming off, snap back, shot, okay? So we can do the same thing, okay, with the high split, all right? So let's run it as a high split, okay? So get the ball here, okay? Uh, now I need my passers are going to be a little different, so I want one passer over here, right? You're going to actually be, actually let's have you pass from the bottom of the floor for me, please. Okay, so we're going to throw it here. Um, you're going to come over. Uh, come o uh, Yeah, actually I got you up at the top of the floor now, not the bottom of the floor. So let's, let's go back and start that. Right. You're, you're up here. So we're running high split, okay? We like to shoot out of three-man actions, otherwise it gets too, too messy. Throw it in here. We run a high split, all right? One of you guys is going back door, okay? Let's say it's you, you're cur curling over top. You're going to get a pass from him, finish that layup. Now you're coming back here, okay? Come off, got that? I want you to come off for a jumper. So let's say the defense goes under, you're shooting that shot, and you're going to pop out and you're going to shoot that shot, all right? So my second pass is going to be over there on the wing, all right? And again, I can manipulate the defensive what I want the defense. Let's say we know we're going to play a team that goes under a lot of pick and rolls. We're going to work on shots behind the pick and roll. Okay, we're going to work against a team that has their bigs all the way down the floor in pick and roll. We're going to work on, we're going to work on uh, spot jumpers on the pop. All right, so we'll run that little sequence. Here we go. Let's go. <clears throat> Good. Nice. Come off, pick and roll, shot. All right. Good. Okay. So we can run all of our actions in three-man shooting groups, okay? Um, and then we like to challenge our guys, hey, we're going to run this. We get to, we're going to run shooting out of uh, whatever, C low, uh, until we make three triples, which means three sequences where all three shots go in. All right? So that's an express version. <laughs> um, so now I'm happy to entertain any questions that you have. How we would do it in a real practice? Yeah, in a continuity mode, like to do more repetition as it's possible. Yeah, okay, so here's what, so let, let, this is how we would practice this, okay? So give me all five guys. Let's, let's just move that uh, cart out of the way for me, please, all right? Um, so we're gonna go five guys on the baseline, all right? So here's a, because you wanna get good at flowing into this and reading and getting the lag timeout. We're going to go five man weave, okay? So we have one ball, okay, one ball. I only have five guys, I have one ball. Every pass, you're going behind the guy you pass to, okay? When you go behind the guy you pass to, you got to touch the sideline. All right, so we're going to go five man weave down. We're going to come back in the same spots just to make it simple for you that you just were in, okay? And then we're going to, we're going to run the point guard, okay? You can throw the ball wherever you want. Then you got to make your cuts, and then we're playing off of that, okay? Yes? No, you're going five-man weave down, and then you're just running down into the spacing that we just had in our corner offense. It relies on you, though, getting us into the stuff quick and then making your cuts, right? What I want after that, after we make our initial pass, wherever it may be, I need seven more passes, all right? We'll count them out. All right, here we go. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Five weave, five weave, five weave. Get ahead of the ball, get ahead of the ball. Here we go. Let's go, let's go. Get to your spots. Where was your spot? Where was your spot? Okay, good, good. Going through, he's going through. That's one. Okay, two cuts, cuts, three cuts, space the floor. That's it. Good. Stay low. Yeah. Is that seven? Here we go, let's go again. Let's go set, let's go. Uh, so now, you guys are roughly familiar with the different actions, right? S low, high, slice, double, rip, or through. Okay, so I'm gonna call the action when you come back, okay? Five weave, listen for my call on the way back. Let's go. 
Good, good, good. Come on, get ahead of the ball. Get ahead of the ball. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Slice action. Let's go. Slice action. So this is slice, cut, pin down. Slice action. All right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Remember, we said that's when we throw here. Yeah, we throw here. Okay. So run it. Let's go. Keep it. Keep it hopping. Keep it hopping. I need seven passes. Pin down. That's one. Here we go. Let's go. Move. 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 Chase it. Chase it. Two. Let's go. Cut. Three. Four. Attack the middle. Good. All right. All right, a little rough around the edges, obviously. Uh, guys, when you are dribbling, okay, I know we're just playing five on zero. Well, you want to get to the paint, all right? Get to the paint. Paint grab, paint grab, paint grab. Get in here. Practice getting downhill to the basket on the catch, all right? Me, what does that mean? It means I'm down, I'm ready. When the ball hits my hands, I'm throwing it out in front, and I'm going downhill into the paint, okay? Don't play what we call, everyone works on shell defense, right? You guys heard that term? Shell defense, I have a term, shell offense, all right? When you play shell offense, which means you have four or five guys around the perimeter, you're not going to win much, okay? You got to get to the paint, cuts, pick and rolls, drives, okay? We, we, you know, we always telling our guys, too much shell offense out there, 